In this video, we will see problems from exercise 1.3. Question number 4. State whether the following relations are functions or not. If it is a function, check for one-to-oneness and ontoness. If it is not a function, state y. So let's look at the first one. So given to you, a is equal to a b c and the function f has a c b c c b such that f maps from a to a right so you have here set A mapping to set A and in set A you have A, B, C, A, B, C. Now let's look here. A is related to C. So A to C. B is related to C. So B to C and C is related to B. So C to B. Now, it is a function because each element in the domain, so this is your domain and this is your range. The each element in your domain has only one value in the range. Therefore, it is a function. However, it's not a one-to-one -one function because A and C or A and B are associated with C. So they have to have unique values in the range. So it's not a one-to-one -one function. And also it's not an onto function because we have A here standing alone without being associated with any element in the domain. Therefore, this is not an onto function either. So to answer the question, so part A, since Each element in the domain is associated with only one element in the range F is a function now for whether it is a one one to one function or let me say f is not a one to one function because the elements A and B have the same element C associated in the range. Okay, then the last part, which is whether it is an onto function. So again, F is not and onto function because a in the codomain okay we call this entire set where it maps to as the codomain so a in the codomain is not associated with any element in the domain. Question number two. So given x is equal to x, y, z and the function f is equal to 
x comma y x comma z z comma x and f such that maps from x to x so you have x in the domain and in the range also you have x so the values of the elements of x are x y and z x y and z now x is associated with y and x is associated with z and z is associated with x so this is not a function because x is associated with two elements in the range therefore it is not a function so for the part one of the question since the element x is associated with y and z in the range f is not a function so therefore you don't have to talk about one to one or on to us because it's not a function at all so using set notation we can say x belongs to capital x and within bracket you can say domain forms two images on the co domain in bracket we can mention y and z therefore the function therefore f is not a function question number five let a is equal to one two three four b is equal to set a b c d give a function from a to b for each of the following so question first you know the part one of the question is neither one to one nor on to function so let's first this is a and this is b okay so a has one two three and four and b has a b c and d okay the first part of the question is it has to be neither one two one nor on two okay it should be neither one to one nor on to function so for one to one function every element in a should have a unique image in b so if it doesn't have a unique image that means if a is with a, one is with a and two is also with a then it's not a one to one function okay for an on to function you need to have at least if this is your codomain you need to have at least one element which is not associated with a in the relation okay so this is your domain All right so let's try let one be associated with a two be associated with a three be associated with c four with d so here you can see clearly that it's not a one-to-one -one function because one and two are associated with a in the range and it's not a onto function because b is not associated with any element in a therefore it's neither one-to-one -one nor onto function so you can define the function f as the Cartesian product 
1 comma a 2 comma a 3 comma c 4 comma d is neither a 1 2 1 function nor a on to function part two of the question not one two one but on two okay so for one not one on to one you should have at least two of these elements having the same mapping in the codomain so let's assume that like this is the minimum that we can do to avoid it is not a one-to-one -one function but in this case you're left out with b and then the function becomes a onto function because in codomain there exists a b which is not associated with any element in the domain the four this is not possible. Similarly, for the third, one-to-one -one, but not onto. For a one-to-one -one relationship, each element in A should be associated with a unique element in B. Let's say a is associated with 2, sorry, 1 is with A, 2 is with B, 3 is with C, 4 is with D. So when we look at this, if this is 1 to 1, it's going to look like this. But it's not an on to relationship because there's no element in the codomain which is not associated with the domain. Therefore, this is not possible. 1, 2, 1 but not on two. Okay, this is not possible. Then for the last part of it, one, two, one, and on two. Okay, so if it's one to one, we will see this well, our previous scenario 1 to a 2 to b 3 to c and 4 to d is a one to one relationship and it's also an onto relationship because there's nothing left in um, the codomain which is uh, not associated with a therefore f is equal to 1 comma a 2 comma b 3 comma c 4 comma d is a on to and 1 2 1 function question number 6 find the domain of 1 by 1 minus 2 sin x okay so we can define this as a function of x which is 1 by 1 minus 2 sine x so x belongs to the domain set and f of x belongs to the range set okay now what are the values that x can take so that's what we need to find the range that x can take the values so that set will be our domain all right now from this we can see that the denominator cannot be zero so the denominator cannot be zero this implies that our one minus 
to sin x is not equal to 0. Therefore, what would this mean? So, further simplifying this, our sin x is not equal to 1 by 2. If sin x is 1 by 2, then this will be equal to 0. So, sin x shouldn't be 1 by 2. Now, when is sin x 1 by 2? Let's look at the sine graph. Now, 1 by 2 falls here. So, these are all the points where it is 1 by 2. So, we need to identify all these points from 1 by 2 and eliminate it from the uh, from R or from, you know, the domain set of uh, X. So, sine 30, which is pi by 6 will be 1 by 2. So, similarly, you have all these points. Therefore, using the function, sine function, we can define the 4. x is not equal to pi by 6. The domain can be defined as domain is equal to the set R, which is set of all real numbers, minus n pi plus minus 1 to the power n pi by 6, where n belongs to set of integers. So, this has been already worked out or, you know, learnt in our trigonometric functions. Question number 7. Find the largest possible domain of the real valued function f of x is equal to square root of 4 minus x squared divided by square root of x squared minus 9. Now, for this function to be real valued, you cannot have any negative answer to the square roots. So, therefore, in other words, if the value inside the square root is a negative number, then you cannot have a square root of it. It will be a complex number. So, for both the numerator and the denominator, this value should be positive. So, this is the condition. So, what is given is, given f of x is equal to square root of 4 minus x squared divided by root of x squared minus 9. Now, we need root of 4 minus x squared to be greater than 0. This would imply 4 minus x squared should be greater than 0. So, further, this would mean that our x squared has to be greater than 4. So, we can say that x should be less than 2 and it should be greater than minus 2 to fit this condition. Similarly, we need root of x squared minus 9 to be greater than 0. So, this would mean that our x squared minus 9 should be greater than 0. That means our x squared should be greater than 9. So, this would mean that x is greater than 3 and x is less than minus 3. So, x should satisfy both these conditions. This condition and this condition, all right? So, then that's the domain, right? So, let's use this number line. If this is 0, this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on to minus infinity, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, so on to plus infinity, okay? So, this is the or 0. So, x has to be less than 2, which should, which means x should come in this less than 2 in this direction. And x should be greater than minus 2, which means it should fall in this range between 
this range minus 2 1 plus 2 for the first condition now for the second condition x has to be let me change the color of the ink okay for the second condition x is greater than 3 which means this is our 3 sorry this is our 3 here so x has to be greater than 3 which means it should be in this direction and x should be less than minus 3 which means x should be in this direction so you can see that they have, there is no common terms like if i have to, if i have to write this here this is between the open interval minus 2 1 2 and this is in the open interval minus infinity to minus 3 and 3 to infinity so it doesn't fall there is no common you know place for both these intervals therefore there is no domain the domain doesn't exist at all therefore there is no possible largest largest domain as the domain is a null set. Question number 8. Find the range of the function 1 divided by 2 cos x minus 1. So, x is your domain and this entire function f of x is equal to 1 by 2 cos x minus 1 will be your range function now to find the range of this we can say given okay the range of cos x because if we find the range of cos x then we'll be able to find the range of this entire function so the range of cos x we know is between minus 1 and 1 in close brackets or we can in other words say cos x is greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than or equal to 1. So, 2 cos x is what we have. So, multiply it with 2, so, 2 cos x throughout. So, this is minus 2 implies 2 cos x here, 2 cos x less than or equal to 2. Right? Now, you have 2 cos x minus 1. So now let's subtract them all with minus 1. So 2 uh, minus 2 minus 1 is less than or equal to 2 cos x minus 1 less than or equal to 2 minus 1. So this is nothing but minus 3 is less than or equal to 2 cos x minus 1 less than or equal to 1. Now the inverse of this. So when you do the inverse, the sign symbol will change the 4 you will now get 1 is because 1 by 1 will be 1 so 1 is less than or equal to 1 over over 2 cos x minus 1 is less than or equal to minus 1 by 3 so our range is 2 cos x 1 by 2 cos x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 1 or it should be less than or equal to minus 1 by 3 so if you have your number line here this is 0 this is to infinity so this is your 1 and this maybe is your minus 1 by 3 so one is that this function is greater than or equal to this or it is less than or equal to minus one by three so you can define the range is minus infinity to minus one by three in close this is open bracket here this is a close bracket here this should be a close bracket 
union with close bracket 1 comma infinity open bracket question number 9 show that the relation x y is equal to minus 2 is a function for a suitable domain find the domain and range of the function so given to us x y is equal to minus 2 so we can rewrite this as y is equal to minus 2 over x and this is a function okay so if this is our function then let's find the domain domain is x so for x to be the domain now x cannot be 0 in this set but it can take any other value therefore x is not equal to 0 hence or you can say hence the domain is minus infinity to 0 in open bracket union with 0 to infinity again in open bracket so 0 is not included the rest is all there from minus infinity to plus infinity similarly now for the range you can see very clearly now the range will never be 0 but it can take any value from minus infinity to plus infinity therefore therefore the range is the set R of real numbers minus 0 Okay, only 0 will not be there in this set. That's the range. Thank you for watching Math Tutorial Anand. Please like and you can comment if you have any questions. And do not forget to subscribe to get more videos like this.